was um, the jail experience like for you? Jail is not a very good experience. <laughs> <laughs> but the moment you knew that this is where you're going. What, to jail? Yeah. Gosh. It's hard to talk about. But <laughs> well, I kind of went on tour of jails. Like, I, I, I mean, I guess I'll just tell a story, whatever. Like, um, my dad, um, uh, his estate, his studio was in Peterborough. So we, all of us kids, uh, we've gone through really hard time trying to split up his art. I mean, we, there's eight children, and it's like... We all want it, of course. He's our dad. So just dealing with that is a complete nightmare. Um, so then we figure everything out. Everything's cool. Everything's settled. And then I had to get a truck and drive up there and put his art in the truck and wrap it in plastic and shut the door. And it was really hard. It was a tough day just to put all his stuff in there and shut the door. Because it feels like finality, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, that was... That really sucked. So I started drinking early that day. And uh, I went out to dinner, and, and um, there was a band playing. And there was a girl who's it's never been mentioned, Leah Hawkins, you know, Rompin' Ronnie Hawkins. Yeah. His, his daughter is my friend Leah from Peterborough. And she saw I was really depressed about my dad and stuff, and there was a guitar player playing there, and, uh, and uh, she wanted to sing me a song. She's like, I want to go sing you a song. I go, oh, that's, okay, cool. And she went up to the guy and he goes, no, you can't sing. This is my show. You can't sing. I was like, what? And then um, there was nobody there. It was just us. So I didn't understand why he was being a dick. <laughs> Fair question. So, yeah. so, and she kept trying to sing and he kept saying, no, you can't. And then I, so I, I got kind of mad at him. Um, Maybe some ice cubes were lobbed in the general direction. Um, I don't, I don't know how that happened, or, but well, the, probably you threw them. No, I, that, no? I, I wouldn't do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, the owner came up and asked us to leave, and so I was getting kicked out of a bar in Peterborough after the day I had, and so I let him know what I thought of his whole scene. And then I was walking out of, of the bar, and I, and I had a glass of wine, and I was mad, and I threw the wine glass on, on the ground like they do in Spain, you know. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I got bear-hugged from behind. You can see it on TMZ. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I was trying to gouge his eyes out, you know, do some fun stuff like that, grab him in the nuts, with, you know, but I couldn't reach, you know. And then my buddies come up and grab my arms, and they go, Sebastian, don't do anything. I go, what the fuck is... Oh, hey, sorry. No. I go, what is going on? And I didn't know who was grabbing me. I had no idea what was going on. So my arms were being held, and I looked down, and he had me in a bear hug, some person. So what are you going to do? Of course, you're going to eat him, you know? <laughs> I can remember being a kid, reading about Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off a bat and, and having to go for rabies shots. And I was going, does that mean when you're in a band you have to get rabies shots? And, and I had to get rabies shots. No, I didn't get shots, but I had to get tested to make sure. You didn't I, have it. Yeah. So I'm happy to say I'm rabies free. <laughs> And then that begins the process of jail. That and then it starts. Then it starts. Oh well, yeah, I went to jail. Okay, that night, that was fun. And then the, I can't believe these stories I have to tell. Um, so, um, so I woke up the next morning from jail. And um, by the way, concrete beds are not comfy. I will take a Tempur Pedic any time. <laughs> um, so I'm all ready to get out of jail, and my lawyer's like, "Oh, I have some bad news for you." And I go, "What?" And they go, well, the Toronto police are here. They're taking you to jail in Toronto tonight. And I go, what? And then that's a whole other story. But um, we, I don't think, I, I don't have time for all these jail stories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, go for it. well, really, really, really quick what that was. Um, back in 1987, um, my ex-wife Maria did a calendar for Fillmore's uh, strip club, a topless calendar, because she was a waitress. She wasn't a stripper, but she was a waitress, but she was extremely pretty. And so she did that for like 300 bucks. And then 
in 2006, 25 years later, I was walking past Fillmore's and they have her picture in 2006 saying tonight, live on stage, and that was my wife, and I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> so I went in there, I go, dude, that's the mother of my, child, my kids, you, you, you need to take those pictures down, please. And he's like, oh, they're our property. I go, nah, she's my property. Yeah. And then he's like, no, and I was like, ah, well, and then I went a little cuckoo. <laughs> So I went to jail that night for that. Um, but what are you gonna do? It's the mother of your child, like you know. It's a, know. it's a, but it's an interesting relationship with your own anger. Going anybody going from a boy to being a man. How did you learn to channel anger and figure that out? Because as much as it's, it feels good to do that, you can't do that all the time, no. or you will be in jail all the time. You're right. You're right. Well, I don't think I've figured out the becoming a man thing yet. <laughs>